Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Near Protocol. Near Protocol was on fire last bull cycle. Then, like everything crypto, winter came on and then everything took a cool down, especially Near. Now you hardly hear anyone talk about Near. And I was interested in this project. I thought it had a lot of potential, so I decided to make a video to see what's currently going on with Near. If that's something that interests you, stay tuned. Let's see what we get. If you like anything in the video, please hit the like button and definitely help the channel grow. And I appreciate your time. So let's get into near. So currently, if we look at coin market cap, near ranks 38. And its current price is $1.49. And for the past seven day, it was up 8.12%. And that's partly due to the Ripple case. And a lot of oints, all coins went ripping after that happened. So near benefited from that as well. Has a market cap of 1.4 billion. Um, 24 hour volume was about 101,000. And if we look at the total circulating supply currently is 936 million near tokens out there. Now let's take a look at the ecosystem. Ecosystem is growing. You know, they have DeFi infrastructures, NFT and gaming, which we'll touch upon good community, um, wallet integration and DAOs. So everything you want to see in the project that's growing. Now, let's take a look at the top ecosystems with active developers. When this is important, especially during the bear market, you want to see where the developers are going, where the innovation is going on the blockchain. With no doubt, we know that ETH will be number one. Um, and then surprisingly under that is Polkadot. And this is full time developers as of June 1st, 2023. Cosmos right under there and Solana 363. Where is near? And you see near right there at 132. You know, um, and I guess in the same realm, you would say Ada Cardano 133, BNB 133, and then you have Nier right there. But then let's look at total developers. Total developers on Cardano is 423, BNB 548, and look at that 539 total developers on Nier. Very, very interesting. Um, and that's what you that's basically what you want to see. And if you look at some others that are under it, uh, I did a video on Avalanche last week, and you see total developers on Avalanche, 308. So there are more total developers on near than there are on Avalanche. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. More than Cardano as well. So that's something to take note of, you know. Although they're quiet, you don't hear much about them. They are still working, and they have a ton of developers on site. Now, let's take a look at the TVL. What's DeFi looking like for near? currently ranked 35 so there's an opportunity there um, big opportunity uh, total TVL is about 38 million um, and if we look at the DeFi projects that's driving that number let's take a look here you have basically linear protocol Metapool Burrow and their two DEXs ref finance orderly network um, that's driving that TVL number so TVL is definitely an opportunity for them um, let's see what happens. Let's see if they continue to grow that and push that. Let's take a look at NFT. So if we look at Crypto Slam and they rank the NFT um, blockchains based on volume and sales. And you see that number one is ETH. We know that Bitcoin number two with ordinals. And then you have Solana. They have a strong uh, NFT market. But then if we go down this list, looking at blockchains, we do not see near. So that is an opportunity for them. So does that mean they don't have NFTs? We just saw the ecosystem listing NFTs. So what's going on? They do have two NFT market spaces that I saw, probably more, but these are the ones that you know caught my attention, which is Paris. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and then you know basically you can you know Par Paris token also helps you stake. Um, and then just looking at some of the art here, pretty impressive. Um, Yeah, pretty impressive art. Uh, I haven't heard of many of these. Um, that's not to say that they can't blow up in the near future, but there's near knots, freaky felines, um, Isaac here. And then they have another marketplace here called Mint Base. And uh, let's take a look at some of the art here. You know. Not too shabby, not too shabby. So they are working on NFTs. Yes, it doesn't have the market share of the big boys, but they're still working on it. And let's see what happens in the future. Now, let's take a look at gaming. Gaming, as far as the market and as, as a whole, gaming is not really doing that great right now. Um, DeFi is probably where it's at. 
but gaming's lacking. And let's see in the top 25 if we have anything related to near gaming on this list. And we do. We have a game called Play Ember. And if we look at the volumes, about increase of 12%. But if we look at this chart as a whole, um, you'll see there's not much going on with gaming as far as revenue goes and, and activity. So, you know. It is what it is, but let's take a look at this game that uh, Nier offers, Play Ember. And basically, it's pretty cool. It's a mobile game that helps you on-ramp from Web 2 gaming to Web 3 gaming. So I could see a use case for this in the future, especially if gaming takes off in the next two years. Um, so something to keep an eye on. Actually, a decent project to keep an eye on. We'll see what happens with that. Next, let's take a look at social activity. Obviously, if you can have the best technology, but you don't have people following it or using your network, you don't have developers, it don't mean jack. But according to them and according to Twitter, minus probably some bots, they are almost at 2 million followers on Twitter. 1.9 million to be exact. And that is impressive. So people are definitely interested in this project. Um, according to Crypto Depth, if we look at the trending searches, Nier is also up there. And this is as of July 10th of this year. So people are still still interested in near um, all the projects that are people are searching for Matic, Avila, Avila, uh, Phantom, Sui, Optimism, ETH and Metis and Metis. We covered on this channel as well. I like Metis, but near is up there. So that's good. Now, let's look at staking near offer staking and currently ranks number 12 as far as other projects go. Um, about 46 percent of near is staked. And it's good, you know, it's helping secure the network. People are aiming yield. It's about 8% reward right now for staking your near. So that's that's what you like to see. Staking it and help keeping the network secure. People believe in a project and that's possible. I like it. Now let's look at daily activity. Um, and then if we look at this according to the chains, daily, I'm sorry, daily active users, according to these projects here, Tron, believe it or not, is number one. And for some reason, I can't believe Tron numbers. I see it all the way up there on TVL and all these other metrics, but Tron and Jason Sun, Justin Sun, I can't, I can't do it. So I always almost eliminate Tron from anything that I see. But um, if we look at the chains here, you see near right here as far as daily activity, um, active users 71,000, 71,704. So people are still using it. And that does not sound like a ghost chain to me. Obviously, you want these numbers here, um, you know. BNB chain 1.4 million, Bitcoin 652, ETH 372. But if we compare it to like, you know, the likes of Avalanche, Avalanche has 86, uh, Nier is at 71, and then the next closest is Phantom at 36. So people are still using Nier. And that's what this video, I hope, drives home. Now, let's take a look again, uh, total transactions here. And this is as of July 13th for Nier. 386,000. So again, there's still some activity going on. They have low gas fees. And Nier, again, is an L1. And they consider a baby Solana because Solana was basically going to be the ETH killer with up to 65,000 TPS. Um, Nier is slower than that. It's about 10,000 TPS. But, you know, they boast that with the sharding, it's uh, more secure. Although it's not as fast as Solana, but it's more secure and it's easier to use, user friendly. So that's the selling point for that. And it's also VC pack, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, now let's take a look at some news. What's been going on? I said it's been quiet, right? A bear market woes near foundations. Treasury loses two hundred million dollars. Um, so that's not good, right? You don't want to see that you're in the business of making money. So what is going on with that? Um, the near blockchain prides itself as a blockchain operating system for an open web. However, the ecosystem has certainly been through some rough patches in the past. Last year, the foundation shut down its algorithmic stablecoin USN after suffering a collateral gap of $40 million. Throughout Q2, the near ecosystem saw 1.1 million active accounts with 42 new strategic partners coming on board. The near token is currently trading at, you know, we just saw 1.49 down more than 60% over the past year. So again, although they lost liquidity, a lot of um, some projects are gaining uh, partnerships and gaining some some money, but they lost some and this to be expected, but they still have money. Um, they're still building, as we saw, and developers are still on board. And according to this article here, you saw that they have over one point one million monthly active accounts as well as new strategies. So still growing. 
Also in the news, we have Near Foundation and Alibaba Cloud, Alibaba Cloud Forge powerful partnership to drive Web3 development in Asia. Very, very big. We know Alibaba is the Asia counterpart to Amazon here, and it's huge. We know how many people live in the, on the continent of Asia. Big, big, big things. So that's a, a strong partnership in my opinion. Basically, they formed a strategic relationship to collaborate and speed up the development of dApps and blockchain technology, marking a significant milestone for the Web3 ecosystem in Asia. This partnership is a huge step forward in encouraging creativity, improving scalability, and facilitating widespread use of Web3 solutions in the area. Now we know China just eased up their, you know, their restrictions on cryptocurrency. Um, I believe Near is one of the accepted ones there. So as soon as China starts opening up and you start seeing activity and that money flowing into crypto, Near will definitely be a beneficiary of that, especially with this Alibaba um, partnership. So that's positive. Also, Czech Auto Conglomerate, Skoda Auto launches an NFT platform and their partnership with Near on that. So we talked about Near and how they're trying to grow and we see that starting to happen. So that's a good partnership for them. Although I've never heard of this automaker before, but hey, it's bigger than the U.S., right? There's other things out there. So the fa any partnership they have, as long as they could draw some traction, some attention to the space, it's a good for me. Now, Neria has launched on Meta Yield. What is that, you may ask? Neria. So Near Starter has announced its launch, a, a fundraising campaign on Neria, on Meta Yield, the lossless staking rewards based on crowdfunding platform on Near. Near Starter is an incubator and launch pad focusing on accelerating and creating a funding system for projects deployed on the Near protocol and Eura. Its incubation process and services include consultations on legal setup, product formulation, white paper and documentation, tokenomics, cap table management, secondary market and liquidity management, treasury management, audits, listing partnerships, and much, much more depending on the project's needs. Again, building is what we, that's what we want um, during this bear market. So again, just everything I shared in this video just showed that Near is not a sleeping ghost chain they're still developing they're still growing they're still users and that's what you like to see now let's take a look at inflation token unlocks and all of that good stuff um so currently according to token unlocks is ranked number 40 so that's not a good ranking um why is that you may ask so the last unlock was in october of 2022 and at that time it looks like the unlock was for 147 thousand dollar uh tokens now we have the unlock in October 12th of this year, and the, it's going to be an unlock of 155,000 tokens. And then after that, October 2024, you'll have 162, and then you'll have another unlock on October 2025. And at that time, I believe that's when all the tokens will be unlocked. Um, the near, I believe the max supply or what they say is the max supply is a billion. So we're not too far off there. What's concerning, though, is that majority of these tokens are held by investors, the you know, um, core contributors, early ecosystem, operation, foundation, all of that. So they hold a big amount of the supply. Um, that's my only concern with this project is that, you know, they own a lot of the supply, which means they can dump at any moment. Are they going to do that? I don't know, but it's a risk, right? Um, so that's my only concern with that. And looking at this here, like I talked about, the entire supply should be done for by October of 2025. So that's what we got as far as unlocking and inflation. So do they have anything to combat that inflation that we just talked about? They do. They have a burning mechanism. Um, so basically, near protocols issuance of tokens or inflation is necessary to pay for network operators called validators. There is a fixed issuance of around 5% of the total supply each year, 90% of which goes to the validators in exchange for computing, storage, and securing the transactions happening on the network. As mentioned above, all transaction fees collected by the network get burned. So burning, they do have it. Therefore, the issuance of NEAR token is actually 5% uh, minus transaction fees. This means that as the network grows in usage, issuance can become negative, introducing negative inflation to the protocol. So that's, I like it. I like it. 
Um, so now let's take a look at price action here. Uh, $1.49. Um, circulating supply we talked about is 936.7 million. And then we have a max or total supply of a million. So then that's about roughly 60 million tokens that are left to be distributed into this project in the next two years. 60 million tokens. Ugh, I don't know. I know they're introducing some burning, but sheesh. So that's going to impact the price anyway. Um, however, we know that there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines, a lot of money trying to come in the crypto. They're just waiting for some regulation and some ruling as far as securities go. The Ripple ruling was huge, very, very huge. Um, if that money comes in, and we're talking about the Black Rocks of the world, the Fidelities of the world, then you have Asia coming in. And if they come in and they start coming in, and we have this bull cycle that everyone is anticipating to happen, there's nothing to tell me that Near can't get back to its all-time high or surpass that number. So if you have a project that's currently sitting under two bucks and you know it can hit $20 or almost with certainty, say, if everything goes correctly, it can be $20, that sounds like a good, good, good investment to me. And right now, they're doing all the right things during this bear market and still building. Um, and they have a strong community behind them that I like a lot. I like a lot. So I'm very excited, like my last video said about the crypto space. Um, my channel is all about looking at different projects. I'm going to start looking at lower cap projects as well to see if I could find 100x gem. Um, but I want to show a video of Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock. And this guy hated crypto in the beginning, but now he can't seem to stop talking about it. So I'm going to share this video and leave it at that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my content. Let's take a look at this video. Um, over the last five years, <clears throat> more and more our global investors are asking us about the role of crypto. And as I said, I do believe a lot of crypto is, is going to be, it's an international asset. It's going, it is, um, it has a differentiating value versus other asset classes. But more importantly, because it's so international, it's going to transcend any one currency in currency valuation. If you just look at the value of, of our dollar, it, how it de uh, depreciated the last two, two months and how much it appreciated over the last five years, I mean, a international crypto product